First of all, I'd like to say good morning to everyone. Glad nice everyone was able to make it this morning. And uh, I trust and hope that you're as thankful as I am that uh, the weatherman was kind of off in his prediction that uh, we were going to have some <coughs> tornadoes this past week. And I've seen some of the results of the, the tornado after it left here down in Mississippi and Alabama. And it wiped whole towns out. That little town, it, it, it completely destroyed it. And so we're so so fortunate that uh, we got skirted again. <laughs> and so so we're we're really thankful for that. And uh, I like to say that uh, the prayers of, of the Hal's dad and their, his family is they go through the loss of, of their loved ones last week. He's been he's been ill for quite some time, and so we know that if a person is a church goer and he strives most of his life to please God, then he's got a lot better chance than anyone else has the one that don't believe and don't do what's right of becoming part of that angel band that will be developed in heaven once in one day. The uh, talk I won't talk on this more. I thought about staying home or calling and and trying to get someone else to take my place, but I know how hard it is sometimes if you don't have some warning to, to, to what's coming when you show up for church. So, so I decided to go ahead and, and do the best I can. And, and this this little lesson, I'm sure Brother Paul is going to be looking at a lot of other scriptures that go with it. So it, it just touching on, on some things, it's not, it's not going depth in it. And hopefully I'll be able to stand up here and get through it. But uh, as you know, I'm still recuperating from that surgery. And they tell me I've got to retrain some of my inner parts. And so far, they seem to be training me. I don't seem to be doing any good with them. But hopefully, and uh, in, in time, it will, it will get better. I talked to Rita's, Rita's sister. She was, she was a doctor's assistant for several years. And, and I was telling them, she asked me how I was doing. I told her, I'm talking good. And I said, I still got problems inside. And she said, don't get no big hurry. So I said, sometimes it takes six months or a year to get over this. So, so I'm going to keep, keep plugging along and keep trying. And because the Lord's help, we'll, we'll overcome it. Well, the uh, main reading this morning, and I'm sure most of you have this lodged in your, in your brain, in your mind. Uh, we've been we've been knowledge have knowledge of it from a very early age. Those of us who are members of the church. That's John three and sixteen. John six three and sixteen will be our reading this morning, and the topic will be God's plan for saving man. So He had a plan for those who wish to have something better, something different after this life is over. And so it's not something that people are going to get but just because they ask for it. It's something they got to prepare for. And sometimes it takes a whole lifespan, a whole lifespan to get ourselves set up and ready for that for that last day when Christ will come back and judge and judge those who have done wrong and those who have strived to do right throughout their lifetime. So turn with me, if you will, to John, John 3 and 16. Thank you. <coughs> For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I, I notice that should not there. And a lot of people want to put the would not. And that don't believe there. It still should be should not. <coughs> it should not perish, and they won't if they follow the commands. And we know that one of the greatest commands we have is to love our Savior and follow after His instructions. And sometimes it, as we go through life, it becomes, it becomes really difficult for us to do that. But uh, we have seen through, the, through past years that it can be done. We've seen a lot of, a lot of brothers and sisters go on from this life are waiting for their judgment day, waiting for that new home. 
And so at this time, it's just this place of honor, privilege, and go to God in prayer. So we ask that you own yourself while we pray. You know, I've been at this a long time. And I like to feel it. I've accomplished a whole lot in my lifetime as a Christian. And I've always done the best I could. Now, I know some place we feel like we come up short, but we know that the Lord watches over us and He knows our thoughts and our plans and all these different things, our intentions. And uh, one thing, one thing I've never been able to do, and that is I never did have a real good memory. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't look at a, a scripture and, and get the number straight in my mind and somebody come along 15 minutes later and ask me if I'd probably be able to tell what I said. But it's a, Something that uh, we all have problems with, I know, and some of us have photographic memory. And they can look at these things and go right back to them every time. And one of the old brothers that I always looked up to, he, uh, he was able to, when he mentioned something in the scriptures, he was able to tell you right where it was at. And he'd just take you there and show you. And so he, he spent a most of his life studying and teaching the gospel also. My dad did too. Most of you knew him. He did the very best he could too. But the uh, little this little deal here, God's plan for saving man, the first thing we'll look at, and like I can say, I'm not going to get all these scriptures. <laughs> you can do it at home. You can stay at home. And there's a lot more than what I'm going to give you. The first thing is uh, divine love. The next is God's grace. Then there's Christ's blood, the Holy Spirit of the Word. Uh, the sinner's faith, sinner's repentance, sinner's confession, sinner's baptism, <coughs> Christian love, Christian work, Christian hope, and Christian endurance. And no one in this life that I can fathom in any way would be what Christ did. He came down here with a plan. And so many things was out there that was disrupting, disrupting his idea and his teaching on how things should be. Once he, once he sets up his gospel and leaves his apostles and disciples with carrying it on, then that is a, a bewildering, bewildering job they, have, they had to do. And we're thankful that they, they, they accomplished their, their plan, their, their, their resolve, just like Christ did His. You know, it's kind of hard to believe that someone that we're not acquainted with uh, physically, only spiritually, would have done all the things that Jesus did for us. And then all the humilia humiliations and all the bad things that people threw at Him, he was able to go through it and maybe even get stronger. But uh, he accomplished his mission. He, he accomplished what God sent him down here to do. And we look around us at all the, all the different teachings this day and time, how they are not happy with what Christ put down. And so they like to change things around a little bit to suit themselves. And you know, uh, it's a free country, and uh, people worship the way, way the way they want to. It doesn't have to be the way Christ told them to. And so they, they were about their own way, doing things their own way. And these things will come to light <clears throat> that they judgment, whether they were successful at what they were doing or not. You know, you know the, uh, the Pharisees, they had their own form of worship service, even though they didn't have God's promises until Christ came. 
And when Christ came, the Gentiles, the Sadducees, and all the rest of them could have a portion, a part in that, that life that Christ promised us after this life is over through obedience to His Word. So He says that God sent His only Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the commandment that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because our deeds were evil, and they still are. So many things that they do are evil, and they don't do things according to the scriptures. And it's hard to it's hard to believe that they can actually think that they're going to have to be rewarded for not doing what Christ said. I seen a little remake of a, a deal that happened several years ago. I'm so sure I'll remember it well. David Koresh and Waco. That was a, an example of someone who was coming up with his own own way of doing things and through some bad strokes and bad bad things that happened those people a lot of those people lost their lives because of following him so whenever we decide to become a Christian lead a Christian life we need to we need to find out what Christ expects of us what's his plan for us <coughs> And what he going to what he going to reward us with if we continue in this plan? And that's the best thing you can come up with. I don't care how far you look, how far you search. Man cannot come up with anything, any plan better than Christ has and God has for us. The ones who obey His teaching and who love Him. He said, Christ said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." That's not too hard to understand, is it? If you don't love Him and you don't respect Him, you won't want to follow Him. But if you see what He has done, the things that He accomplished while He was here, then you will understand why He was the most precious gift ever bestowed upon this earth. When He came down Germany and died on the cross for a bunch of people 2,000 years later were never to physically look upon Him, physically to put our, our hands in, in his side and the piercings and, and do the things that they did back then. So our faith is one thing that sets us apart from a lot of other people because they have ideas but they don't use them according to the scriptures, according to their knowledge. So the divine love that God showed us, even though he wasn't acquainted with us, he didn't know us back then, but he knew those people back then and he wanted to give them a chance for having a great time. Because those days was hard. Those people had to offer the very best one of their flock, the best crop they raised, all the very best things that they could accomplish. They were required to offer the very best. They couldn't they couldn't use a a lamb with a blemish on it because the farmer just wanted to get rid of the bad one. They had to use the bird heads. He said, I want gold tried with fire. So most of you know, whenever we refine gold or any kind of metal, it has to be hot. Now, the temperatures have to be really hot in order to melt these different materials. And so that's what God wants us. He wants us to be strong and to be diligent in our, in our work and our effort for Him. So we've seen divine love in John 3, 16. So let's look at God's grace, Ephesians 2 and 8. God's grace, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace, are you saved through faith? And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. 
So there's people out there. They have missionaries all over the world teaching teaching a form of gospel. And some of them probably recorded their scripture, and actually some of them are not, but they're all over the world. And when you look at some of the good things that these people are doing for other countries, other people, then it's hard to, it's hard to imagine that they wouldn't be accounted worthy of God's grace, of His love. But still, it kind of boils down to, if you love Him, keep His commandments. Don't try to change them. Keep them. Keep His commandments. So Ephesians, Ephesians makes it plain in the second chapter and the eighth verse. For the grace of your sake. It says here in the tenth verse, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And that's what he requires. That we walk in his footsteps as close as we possibly can. Someone asked me one time when I was taking care of the communion and said, uh, you're not Christ. How come you put yourself in, in Christ's place? Uh, you know, for standing and breaking that loaf and signified his Christ's broken body. And I asked him, I said, uh, would you define Christian for me? A Christian is a Christ-like person. So that answered the question, didn't it? Even though I'm not Christ in the, in the body, still, in the spirit, we're, we're taking his place. Doing his, doing his will. And that's all we should desire to do. What he, what he commanded to do. <coughs> nothing more, nothing less. Next one we look at is Christ's blood. Romans 5 and 9. Christ's blood. That blood was... Really, really potent, really powerful. It's so potent now that when we're baptized, His blood washes away our sin through, through obedience and through baptism and that watery grave. We can wash away our sins. And even though we don't have a lot of worldly things going on in our lives before we become a Christian, we still need to wash away our sin because as we. As we go through this life and endure things, there's a lot of people, a lot of teaching that's going to be contrary to what God's Word says. So we need to be able to discern right from wrong. I do what's right instead of what man says. Romans 5 and 9. Let's go with the first, let's start off with the eight. But God commanded His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, ooh, that's, that's something right there, isn't it? Even though we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't know us personally. Other than when we were baptized, and then He becomes acquainted with us then. But before that, He didn't know us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Through him. <coughs> so it's. He, he tells us that I'm not going to put more on you than you can bear. I mean, you're going to have trials, you're going to have tribulation. I'm not. I'm going to make everything real easy for you. It's going to be hard. And you're going to have to be really determined, really seeking something better than this life in order to achieve it. And so that's why we, we still, 2,000 years later, we're serving Him the way His way His Word tells us to, the best we possibly can. While we were sinners, Christ died for us much more than being unjustified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Now, I don't necessarily mean physically saved. We shall be spiritually saved when this life is over. If we, when we were enemies, were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Two thousand years later, we can we can follow God's command 
and we can look for a better life after this life is over. But like I say, it's not always easy. It's not always easy. You know, whatever you, whatever you think about that, that cruel mockery that they, they did on them, and all the bad things they did to him on that sad day, and right before it. You know, and the least little thing pops up around us and causes us to become angry <laughs> and to think evil thoughts. If he hadn't been as strong as he was, then how could he have been able to withstood all the terrible things they'd done to him? It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing that he was able to do it. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. If we were being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So we receive atonement. We receive his blessings. And we receive his promises by being immersed in the watery grave of baptism. And there's a lot of other people out there who decide to do it different ways. But when the day of judgment comes, they will find out whether they were doing it scripturally or the way they wanted to do it. And that's what they'll be judged by. And so we want to do it as much as possible to the way that he, he tells us to. The Holy Spirit. God's plan is that we have the Holy Spirit. Romans 1 and 16. Romans 1 and 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to do salvation to everyone that will leave it to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by the scripture. If they really want to receive well done, Judge Warning. I want to receive well done. And there's so many, there's so many people out there in the world today who are not concerned about what the scripture says. They're doing it their way. And so it's it's going to be it's going to be a sad day when, when Christ comes back and he starts judging people. And the way they live their life. While they while they had the plan to, while they had the time and and, and the ability to seek him out. But they refused to do it. The sinner's faith. Acts 16 and 31. Acts 16 and 31. And they say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the, the word of the Lord unto all that were in the house. He took them the same hour of the night, washed their straps, and was baptized. He and all his straight way. So there's still people out there in the world who claim to be over the scriptures who don't require baptism for the washing of the sins away. They have different ways of explaining this. Billy Graham probably taught a lot bigger crowds, a lot more people than Christ was able to do after Christ was walking the earth. Most of you have heard of Billy Graham, you've seen Billy Graham and some of his, some of his teachings. One thing I always wondered about is whenever he was through with one of his one of his lessons, he invited people to come to the front bench and say the sinner's prayer. And the only thing I can find out about how he believed that way was because they wanted to make out like baptism was a work. And through faith and through Christ's blessing, you didn't have to have work, but that was wrong, that's wrong. Faith will call you to want to do that, do, his work, do what he wants you to do, instead of what the
world tells you to do. And I know it's sometimes it's hard to to separate these things and be able to turn against some of them. But, but uh, in the day of judgment, it'll all come to light. It'll all come to light. And that's when we'll hear it said, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or depart from me, you workers of iniquity. We're going to hear one, one or the other. And so it should be a blessing to know that our Savior died for us he gave his life for us, and all we've got to do is to be obedient to what he tells us. And he's, he's willing to give us eternal life after this life is over. So next is the sinner's faith. I just got through that one. The sinner's faith, then we'll go with the sinner's repentance, Luke 13 and 3. Luke 13 and 3. I'll tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Are those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them? Think ye they were centered above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So that makes it just pretty well plain on it. Except you repent. And as you, you confess that you're living in a sinful world, it's all around, and it's so easy, easy to be tempted and straight away from, from the two words. So it's up to each and every one to, to study and I didn't know what the Word of God requires in order to be pleasing. In other words, pleasing. And sometimes you look at some of the things going out there in the world today. Some of the terrible storms and terrible, terrible things going on out there, the terrible diseases and things. And, and you wonder, you know, how can all these things be? How can all these things happen? To us? It's always been that way. It's always been that way. All the battles that went on during the old scripture, the old, old, old Bible, thousands and thousands of people were slaughtered, you know, for one reason or another, because God wanted them to be at that time. He doesn't want it that way now. He wants us to be meek and humble, and willing to confess His name before men and willing to do the works that He set out for us to do. Look at the Sinner's Confession, Romans 10 and 10. Sinner's Confession. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's a necessary part of God's plan for saving man. Is that we're, we're, we're to be able to confess His name before men. And we're to <coughs> seek out His faith and trust in His Holy Spirit that will we will receive when we're baptized. <clears throat> Sinner baptism. Acts 22 and 16. Acts 22 and 16. And now why tarriest thou? Arise. Be baptized. Wash away thy sins. Calling on the name of the Lord. And so we've seen that a lot of those people at that time, they, they received the word and they were so happy. They were so jubilant that they didn't have to do the things of the old time. Now they, now they have access through Christ's death and through His broken body. They have access to God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thought, isn't it? 
They didn't have access to God back during the old times. They took their, their animals and their sacrifices to the priest and he he took care of whatever it was, that, however they offered them, whether it was fire or whatever. And then that's the way, the only way they had of conversing with God unless they were one of his, one of his apostles or disciples. Now it's not that way. If you want to converse with Christ, what you got to do is bow your head, get down on your knees and pray. And that's the way we do it in this day and time. So things have changed for, for us in a lot of ways and we should be so thankful that they have. After the baptism, we found that Next one is Christian love, Matthew 22 and 37. Matthew 22 and 37. Jesus said to them, Thou shalt love the Lord our God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You should love thy neighbor as thyself. Sometimes we're confused about who our actual <coughs> neighbor is. The, the scriptures pretty well make that plain. Your neighbor is the one that will help you in the time of need. And you're supposed to be like minded. You should be able to devote your time, money, or whatever to those around you that we see that are in need. So, the government works both ways, doesn't it? It works both ways. Christian love, Matthew 22 and 37. Matthew 22 and 37. I, did, I went through that. We'll go to the next one. We'll go to Christian works, James 2 and 24. Christian works. James 2 and 24. You see then, how thy, thy works by man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as a body without spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead, being alone. Faith without works is dead. So we've got to have this, this Christian faith. Also, we need to have this Christian hope. Romans 8, Romans 8, and 24, Christian hope. For I receive my hope, the hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man said, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we, we hope for that we, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So we are waiting now for that great judgment day. When will we receive the, the crown of life at home in heaven? Because we are simple minded enough to follow the scriptures and do what Christ says and ignore a lot of things going on out there in the world that is so so demeaning to God and demeaning to Christians. Sure, you understand what I'm referring to. Christian endurance, Revelations two and ten. Christian endurance. For none of those things must thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulations ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. What more precious promise could you could you want than that? Be faithful unto death. In other words, don't stray off the straight path. When you get on it, <coughs> and then when you when you become weak and fall off, and ask your prayers in church. I'll help you to 
get back on that straight path. Or if you've never been baptized, that's the way you, you come in contact with the Holy Spirit. That's where you come in contact and get your Christian life started. You're doing it the way the Word of God corrects. We never like to close the talk without offering invitations. Anyone who's never become a Christian through obedience, through baptism, would like to take that step this morning. We bid you come. If you're here and you desire the prayer of the congregation, in any case, won't you come while we stand inside the invitation song?